What do you think when one of your members or someone visiting your church says, may I make an appointment to talk with you? I need counseling. I want to dedicate this episode to the leader as counselor. That's not easy. But let's get just a couple of basic facts uh, reviewed in our minds. Number one, people need counseling. They need counseling. And sermons by themselves don't answer all the questions. Life gets really complicated. And they need to be listened to, analyze the problem with them, and get to the Word of God and see what solutions and recommendations can be made to help them. Um, I've noticed as I've traveled around the world that in some cultures, People have like, no, I don't need counseling because I don't discuss family problems, marital problems, or what I'm going through with anyone, period. So the pastors, they preach, they have uh, preparation for sermons, they have conference meetings, staff meetings, but in terms of hours and hours and hours of counseling, no, certain cultures, I can assure you, that does not happen. Some of the really large churches, that's true. And then in other places, People want to be counseled 17 times a day. They have to talk to someone. Um, and I've been with my wife in the inner city of New York, downtown Brooklyn, for a lot of years. And the things that people are facing just, you know, I grew up middle class, Eastern European, Polish, Ukrainian descent, <clears throat> and I lived a certain life, but oh my goodness, over these years, like, I, I don't know what I could hear that I haven't heard yet. I once had a lady tell me after a service, she was a new convert, and she wanted to talk to me. I remember she came right in my office with a, a family member, and she said, I'm really afraid about uh, living with my husband. Uh, he's my, it's my second husband. I have children from the first marriage, and he's acting very strange, and I'm worried for me and my children. So I said, well, has he you know, put his hands on anybody or anything. No, 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 he doesn't. What are you nervous about? Just calm down. She said, well, just he has these strange ideas. And I said, well, you got to understand people are different. She said, well, I know, but he told me the other day that he's done most everything in life that's on his bucket list, but now he really wants to drink human blood. And I went, what? You better get out of there. Well, I told you, I told you. In other words, what Bible verse would I go to? How do you counsel someone? Somebody, just a brand new convert who has the police looking for them. All kinds of complicated situations that are just wild. The biggest challenge to me, the hardest thing for me to do is counsel. Counseling drains me, how about you? Drains me much more than preaching a sermon. Preaching a couple sermons. Counseling just absolutely drains you, but the people need it. Fact number two. We only do biblical counseling if we want to do it in a way pleasing to God. Um, someone wants to go to an analyst of some kind, whatever they feel they should do. But we have to answer to God that we talk to people and we then lead them to God and the Bible to say, given your problem, is there a verse that speaks to that? Is there truth from God that speaks to that? That is all important. Truth number three, we, ask, we have to ask God to raise up, I don't know about you, but I know I'm praying God will raise up more counselors because the load of that in New York City is the myriad of problems, emotions, pain, anguish that people are going through. You really, you just, who, who can do this? How can you hire enough pastors to do this? But not everybody can, can counsel. Not everyone has that gift. It's a combination of Bible knowledge plus sensitivity from the Holy Spirit and compassion that makes people just able to really counsel. Uh, uh, my son-in-law who's on staff with me is an excellent counselor. And when he brings me a problem that he's struggling with, I know, wow, this is going to be a hard one. But that's the nature of counseling. But we're looking for biblical answers, not what we feel, not what we think. But one of the main problems to, very, to begin this whole process is what is the problem? 
Because in my experience, well, a good 80% of the people who come in want to talk about a problem that they need counseling, that's not the problem. And if you let them just lead you to what they want to talk about, you won't get to the, the real problem. A lot of times their problem is horizontal. That's what they want to talk about. Other human beings, their job, their boss, their mother-in-law, whatever. But many times their real problem is vertical, their relationship with God, their walk with the Lord, the lack of grace that they have, their backslidden state, the coldness of their heart. Well, I mean, if you're not right with God and you're not walking with him, well, of course there's going to be horizontal problems ensuing. But to get to that problem, you know, one time I had a precious lady who was in the church about three or four months. She was at every meeting, every service, at the altar praying. She came to me one day and said, would you talk to my husband? Because he doesn't like me going to church. He threatens me when I read the Bible, and, and, and he makes it so hard. I said, would he come in and see me? I don't know. He's very gruff and, and tough. And I said, let me, let me talk to him. I want to stand up for this, this Christian woman. So sure enough, he came. When he walked in, he was about 6'5", strong. Security told me, we're going to stand outside the door when he goes in to talk with you with his wife. I said, no, no, I'm good, because I had never met him. So I said with him, he's quiet but polite. And I said, I hear that you're, you're giving your wife a hard time, and she's just visiting our church now, coming, and I just want to speak to this. And you don't want her to, to serve Christ? You don't want her to be a Christian? You don't, you don't want her to read her Bible? You, you don't want her to have devotion every day? And, you know, come on, pal, what's, what's, what's with that? He said, well, you know, uh, did she tell you the whole story? Because I was totally convinced by her. I forgot that verse, don't believe anything until you get it confirmed. One person comes forward and you believe what they say until another one comes forward. I was naive at that point. I had a lot to learn, still do. I said, what other things you want to talk about? Well, how about this? I come home every day from work. She's still in her nightgown, and she's reading the word, and the, the house is filthy, and she has nothing on, on, on the table for me to eat. I went, what? And I turned to her, and I went, is that true? And she went, well, you know, sometimes I get in the word, and God really begins to just show me things. And I said, you don't cook for your husband. He's working. You don't. You can't even help out with. Yeah. And then a, a lot of times she, the, she won't do any housework. She won't do anything because she's all day talking with people. Well, I have a lot of prayer partners, Pastor. And, you know, we have to dialogue. We have to get closer to the throne of grace. I ended up correcting her because I said, you can't do that. Guess what? She turned on me in the office and he became like my best friend. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So we got to learn what is true, what's the real problem, or else we're on a wild goose chase. We're trying to answer uh, a problem that we're not even sure what the problem is. So in counseling, we need the Holy Spirit to give us empathy, compassion, patience. I want to read one verse to you, though, that uh, tells us how brave we have to be when we counsel. And that is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. Listen to it, because it really is a challenge to all of us. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, this wasn't even to the pastor. This was to the congregation. Warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong. How brave, how spirit-led do you have to be to be able to fulfill this kind of biblical counseling? Some people need nothing but encouragement and, 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 and a word of uh, blessing on them and prayer because they're just beat down by life. Other people are up to no good. And the Bible says here, you got to tell them, you can't be disruptive. You're idle, you're gossiping, you're causing a lot of trouble. Pastor, you would say that to someone? They might leave the church. Listen, 
There's way worse things than a disruptive person leaving your church. No, but I need their attendance and their giving, and then another family might leave. Uh, leave. Look, that's a language I don't want to learn. I don't want to think that way. That's not the way Jesus treated anyone. When someone needed correction, he gave it in love. In love. It's like a doctor saying to someone who's sky high in their blood pressure and, and they have all kinds of physical problems. Hey, look, listen, you got to lose weight. You got to get an exercise program. You got to start doing these things. What if the person says, doctor, I didn't pay good money to hear corrective words. You know, what are you, a hater? You're very judgmental. Your cholesterol is out of the roof. I know, but isn't there just a pill? Can't you just encourage me? No, I'm a doctor. I have to tell you the truth. Well, come on, brothers and sisters. We who God has put in leadership, we got to pray that God will make us effective counselors. Not just, I'm okay, you're okay, but not just pounding on people. They don't need that. But being able with the wisdom of God to bring healing where healing is needed, corrective word where it's needed. Always pointing people to the word of God and to a closer walk with Jesus Christ. Can I tell you one thing, though, in, in parting? I have learned this. A person drawing near to God and getting closer to Jesus, a person spending more time with God and, and getting a new infilling of the Holy, Holy Spirit, that solves not every problem, but boy, does that solve a lot of problems, especially in marriages. You know, if they're both, neither one is walking with the Lord and they profess to be Christians, you're going to have some friction. That you can take to the bank. If they're both walking with the Lord and in the light and humble and full of grace, it doesn't solve every problem. You got to talk, but a lot of problems are going to be solved because then you have grace with people. My wife has to have grace with me. I'm no bargain. If she would just judge everything I, I do wrong, it's going to be a, a fight every day. We need grace with each other, but you can't teach grace. God gives grace. So come on, let's commit ourselves in prayer right now. Lord, help us to be counselors with your heart, filled with your spirit, pointing people to your word. Please help us do that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.